All right, guys, if you are an advanced astrology student or even a professional astrologer, you're going to love this video because here I am going to break down the astrological indicators for you behind my daughter's upcoming wedding. So when you want to predict a marriage for anybody, it must show itself in both people's charts because they are marrying each other. As a matter of fact, whenever any major life event occurs that involves more than one person, it is going to show in both people's charts or if it's uh, many people, a family, let's say, it's gonna show in the entire family's chart. And this is something that is very reliable in astrology. And, and remember the strength of astrology is prediction. The strength of astrology originally rooted in predictive analysis and techniques. And so I am going to show you the birth charts of both my daughter and my future son-in-law. And you're going to see how they both share very different but equally magnificent indicators of marriage. And you're, when it's a marriage year, you will see this for yourself, for your clients, for your loved ones, whoever. So a couple of ground rules, and I want to explain the techniques that I'm going to be using. So I am using the Placidus house system. I am using uh, modern techniques because as a predictive astrologer, I primarily use the Placidus house system and modern techniques when I make my major predictions for my clients. And I have done this for almost 20 years using these methods successfully. So I will be using a combination of transits, secondary progressions, and solar arc directions. To me, this is the perfect trifecta of prediction, uh, of techniques to use for prediction. Okay, so I will be using this for both people, my daughter and son-in-law. And in addition, you are going to see me demonstrate and hear me talk about a technique called converse progressions. Now, converse progressions are not widely used by astrologers, and they're not really widely taught or discussed. But I first learned about this concept from a book that Rose Murray wrote called When Will You Marry? And it has proven to be a really reliable source for marriage potential. It shows other things as well. But basically, a converse progression is, so secondary progressions are your birth chart moved forward in time by about one, uh, one day equals one year of your life moving forward in time. So you could take this as a snapshot. Let's say you, you take your birthday and then you wanna see what happens in your lifetime and figure you live 90 years. Well, you look 90 days ahead in the ephemeris and every single day shows you what will happen that year. Converse progressions are a phenomenon where you take your birth date, and instead of going forward, you go backwards. So it's the same principle, one day equals one year of your life, but instead of going 90 days forward, you're going to go 90 days backwards in the ephemeris. And your software program will allow you to click a converse button when you are looking at progressions, okay? So just understand that this is an advanced technique. You need astrology software for it. And uh, so Celeste Teal talks about this in her book on predictive astrology, if you want a resource. And again, Rose Murray, When Will You Marry? I actually will show you the book. Give me one second and I'm going to grab it. I can find it. So this is a very, this is a very old copy. Uh, when Will You Marry? By... Rose Murray. So this book has been updated and you can find it on Amazon. I'm forgetting the updated title, but in any event, that's, that'll teach you something about converse progressions among other techniques. So when I am looking for specifically for marriage potential for clients, I'm going to use transits, secondary progressions, solar arc directions. Okay. I'm definitely going to use those techniques. 
I will also use the solar return chart. I'm not gonna look at that today in this video with you because there's enough to cover. Now, converse progressions, I do not typically use for clients because I have enough information with everything else that I'm using to make accurate predictions. However, in this video, I wanted to demonstrate the amazingness of this technique because it really shows beautifully in both of the charts that I will show you. And, uh, and so I'm going to, what else did I wanna say? What other, uh, okay. So I think I've covered the mechanics of this video. Again, it's an advanced video. So if you are somebody who comes to my channel just to watch sun sign uh, astrology, to watch your monthly horoscope for your rising sign or your sun sign, I hope that if you decide to watch this video, it inspires you to really learn more about astrology and more importantly, to get a proper consultation with a qualified professional astrologer because only a qualified, competent professional astrologer will know how to use these techniques and do your research, okay? You don't have to hire me. I do offer consultations, but you hire the astrologer that's right for you. Uh, I, I do sun sign astrology and the video horoscopes only because I want those videos to inspire people to want to learn more about astrology, about the depth and breadth and beauty of this amazing, magical, mystical language. So that's obviously my passion. Okie doke, let's get to it. I'm gonna show you the birth chart. I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna show you the birth chart of my daughter. <clears throat> uh, hang on a second. And you're gonna see lots of bi wheels. That's how I decided to do this video, showing you the bi wheels of everything. Okay, so here is my daughter's birth chart. And if you're looking for your clients to, to see if there's gonna be a marriage year, you want to see the ascendant descendant axis activated. Uh, and it could be in multiple ways, transits, progression, solar arcs, okay, multiple ways, but you wanna see the ascendant descendant axis or the rulers of the ascendant descendant activated. You typically uh, can see something going on with Venus since Venus is the natural significator of love and marriage. And basically, what I always tell my students and the rule that I follow before I make a major prediction for anyone is the rule of three. It's an ancient astrological uh, technique and rule that basically says if a major life event is going to happen, you will see it a minimum of three times in different cycles and using different techniques. And if you do see it a minimum of three times, you can very confidently make that prediction for somebody. It is said to be certain that it will occur. And I find that you typically find more than three when it is a major event, okay? I get into the details and the nitty gritty nuances of predictive astrology in my predictive astrology classes. So I'm not gonna be able to do that here too much, but if you are interested in becoming a student of mine, go to insightfulastrology.com, get on my waiting list. I, uh, I really nurture my students and I offer personalized classes. Okay, so we're gonna expect activity in Anna Maria's first seventh house, the rulers of her first seventh house, possibly Venus, and you know, life-changing energy, uh, cycles that symbolize life-changing events. Now, first we're gonna look at transits. And here I wanna tell you that don't expect to see everything in the transits. That is not always the case. You're going to see major life events take place with a combination of transits, progressions, solar arc directions. Sometimes it's gonna be predominantly the secondary progressions that tell the story. Other times it's gonna be transits and progressions together. Other times it's gonna be the solar arc directions and the progressions together. Everybody's chart is going to be different. But what you have to remember is that if it fulfills this rule of three with major life-changing cycles showing itself connected to the event that you're trying to predict, then you can say yes to that event. So we're going to start with the descendant for my daughter, okay? So she has 18 degrees, 24 minutes of Aries on her marriage sector. And that means, sorry, that means her marriage sector is ruled by the planet Mars, okay? And what you're going to notice is that somehow, some way, the marriage sector has to be activated, whether it's by transits or progressions or, or solar arc directions. 
So even though she's not getting married until early May, what happens on April 8th, 2024, is a solar eclipse at 19 degrees, 24 minutes of Aries. So that becomes a major astrological indicator and a major, that is a big boss, life-changing transit. When you have an eclipse on an angle or a personal planet by exact degree, you know major things are gonna happen. So that's number one. So that we got one thing going on there. The next thing that you want to take note of is that she also, the nodes of the moon travel backwards, okay? So the nodes of the moon, the, at the time of the marriage, the north node of destiny is within three, less than three and a half degrees of a conjunction to her seventh house cusp. That is absolutely stimulating the destined energy for the marriage. Okay, so that's going to be a second major event. Now, the nodes of the moon, uh, they have a 19-year cycle, okay? Just like that eclipse on April 8th will not happen for 19 more years on Anna Maria's descendant. The north node will not be conjunct her seventh house or go in that direction for 19 more years. So this, these are big transits, major life-changing changing transits that are occurring. All right, so now what... I will also note, just to be complete here, is that by transit, transiting Saturn is making a square to Mars, and Mars is the ruler of her marriage sector. So this symbolizes the getting serious about commitment energy, right? Now, it is a square, and this is a good time for me to tell you that when a major life event happens, even if it is a positive event, like a marriage or a birth of a child or a big career milestone, you're going to see a combination of supportive positive cycles, as well as some difficult squares or oppositions. And that is just what you need to expect. Because uh, developmental tension, squares and oppositions make life happen. The, the trines and the sextiles and sometimes the conjunctions are just lifting things up and, and adding ease and support. So while we would prefer to see a lot of trines and sextiles and maybe conjunctions, if we're predicting something like a marriage or birth of a child, you have to remember that everybody's experience of an event is going to be different. So uh, it, it doesn't mean it's bad if you are getting a couple of squares or oppositions. It doesn't mean that your marriage will be bad or be doomed. It's it's talking about the flavor of the energy that you're experiencing during this life event. So in this case, it would probably have to do with, since Saturn is transiting Anna Maria's fifth house of children, the serious commitment energy, okay, of knowing that she is going to become a wife and a mother at some point after that, all right? That's all that that symbolizes. Now. But the ruler of her marriage sector is absolutely being hit by by a transit, so we have to notice that. So now what I'm gonna do is take you to her secondary progressed chart. And the secondary, I'm doing by wheels for everything just to make it easier to show you, you know, what's, what's going on here. And so with the progressions, there are a couple of noteworthy secondary progressions that are very close at the time of this marriage. And remember with the progressions, it is uh, one day in the ephemeris equals one year of your life. So these are actives for the year, the marriage year. So her progressed ascendant has moved to six degrees of Scorpio. And the first progression that we're gonna notice is that her progressed ascendant is making an exact and beautiful trine to natal Jupiter in her, life, in her chart. So anything that touches the progressed ascendant affects the descendant, the marriage axis. So here we have Jupiter, natal Jupiter, fortifying this for her. Very, very beautiful. At the same time, she has secondary progressed ascendant square her natal Neptune. And it is interesting that, uh, so the square, I actually know what this means for her very literally because Neptune natally is in her fourth house of home family real estate. And so even though she's deeply in love and getting married, it's not that it's gonna be a delusional marriage. What she's losing, Neptune can signify some kind of a loss. 
her and her future husband plan to move out of state. So what she's losing very literally is she's going to be moving away from her home state at, after she gets married uh, at some point. So that is definitely blurring some lines and adding some, you know, I guess a little bit of sadness, perhaps, even though this is a very happy event. But it is still, it is a, it is a marriage indicator regardless, because the ascendant descendant axis has a, an exact progressed aspect here. So that is showing. So the last progression that I'm going to show you is that secondary progressed Mars. And again, Mars is important because Mars rules the descendant. Secondary progressed Mars is making an exact trine this year to her Mercury placement. And Mercury just rules the mind and decisions and, and contracts. So that is interesting that that shows up in her progression. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, and by the way, you can see we have clearly gotten to well over three, well over three already, but there is, there's more. So I just want to show them all to you so you can see how an astrologer can make these predictions and see the potential of marriage in the chart. And yes, if you're wondering, I did predict my daughter's engagement and marriage. I knew that she was going to get engaged earlier than her um, then my future son-in-law told me when he told me that he was going to propose to her, he told me the timeline. And I said to myself, okay, yeah, um, you're doing it earlier in my brain, of course, because I want them to live their life. And sure enough, plans changed. And he ended up proposing to her the month that I had predicted it. And I told my daughter about this later. She laughed and I showed her the astrology. But, uh, but in any event, th this is now solar arc directions. Solar arc directions are gold. Okay, I learned solar arc directions from my uh, my greatest astrology teacher, the late Noel Till. Here's his book on solar arc directions. It's a, it's an advanced technique, but if you know secondary progressions, let me tell you, solar arc directions are easy because what it does is solar arc directions use the rate of motion of the sun itself to progress every single planet. So it's everything goes one degree, everything, every planet moves forward one degree a year. So it's really easy to use solar arc directions once you understand uh, progressions. So now here is the most remarkable classic marriage indicator that is showing up in her solar arc directed chart. Her solar arc Venus has moved to, let's call it six degrees of Leo because it's five degrees, 58 minutes. So, you know, you round up to make it a little easier. It's six degrees for all intents and purposes. Well, it is making an exact opposition to her natal Neptune at seven degrees. So the way that we say this astrologically, the correct way is uh, solar arc Venus. We're not gonna say opposite, we're gonna say equals. Solar arc Venus equals Neptune. And this is a powerful solar arc measurement and picture that talks about the idealization of love, being in love, glamorizing love, all of the fairy tale yumminess connected to love. And, uh, and keep in mind, Venus happens to rule my daughter's chart. She's a Libra rising, but that doesn't matter. Venus is the significator of love and marriage. So regardless, that would show. There's another solar arc direction that is significant and it, 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 it echoes what we saw in the progress chart. So we saw secondary progressed Mars trying Mercury. Here, what we see is solar arc Mercury equals Mars. And again, even though it's the squ a square, it doesn't matter. We are, uh, the way we say the measurements for solar arc directions is just equals, okay? Solar arc Mercury equals Mars and Mars is important because it is the ruler of her marriage sector. So these are the cycles that we're gonna pay attention to. And again, it echoes the mental agreements, the actual legal contracts connected to the marriage. So now I'm gonna show you her converse directed chart because this is amazing. And again, I know astrologers don't really talk about this, much less do videos on it. I will do a separate video on converse progressions at some point. When, I, when the mood strikes me, because you know I just need to be inspired to do certain videos. So let's look at Anna Maria's bywheel with the converse chart. Now, so converse progressions, it's the same thing, 
one day equals one year, but instead of moving forward in the ephemeris, you're moving backwards. So again, these are pretty impressive cycles when they happen. And in this, uh, in this case, what is quite impressive is that her progressed son, so her natal son is in Leo, the year of the marriage, her converse progressed son leaves Leo and enters Cancer. It's at the 29th degree of Cancer. And that's very significant because the sun rules men in a woman's chart. And so it's symbolizing the change here with the man in her life. She is literally getting married. That's a pretty common type of converse progression to see when you are getting married, when something major like that is happening in your life. Okay, so that is one major converse connection. Another one, which you have to look at the converse angles to see, her ascendant descendant axis is at zero degrees of the sign. So again, symbolizing the change that's happening in her marital status. She's going from single to married this year. And you will see at some point later on by the end of the year, her ascendant will move into early degree, of, I'm sorry, late degree of Virgo because it's backwards, right? Converse progressions go backwards. So this is pretty phenomenal. It, it really is. And the last one is that converse Mercury is conjunct her natal Venus. So again, we have another energy of contracts, communication connected to Venus uh, in this case. Thinking about love, thoughts about love, all of that. Really, really beautiful energy. Okay, so those are my daughter's major marriage cycles. Now we're gonna move on to my future son-in-law's chart. Okay, so same thing, guys. We're gonna look at the ascendant descendant axis. We're gonna look at the ruler of the seventh house. We're gonna look at Venus. So David has a different chart from Anna Maria, but the areas that you look for to predict marriage are the same. And so what we're going to start with are the transits. Now, another nugget, which I teach in my relationship astrology class. I don't use it in natal astrology, uh, but the, the asteroid Juno is the marriage asteroid. And it is sometimes worth looking at in synastry, but also when you are making predictions for marriage, for divorce. And I did look at that for David and for Anna Maria because I wanted to be, uh, to be thorough. And so I'm not sure if it's going to show up here. I was trying to make it show up and I was having a hard time. So you're gonna have to believe me when I tell you, cause I'm not seeing it, but I am gonna show you exactly where Juno is by transit on the day that they get married. It is here. Transiting Juno is exactly conjunct his marriage cycle. So that's pretty impressive because that doesn't happen every day. Okay, so that's an impressive transit. In David's case, the transits on the day that they get married, other than transiting Juno, are not as impressive where you would look at just the transits and say, okay, this dude's getting married. You wouldn't if you were only looking at transits. And this is why you cannot make major life predictions from transits alone. Usually transits will be loud, but not always. And I have seen this over and over and over again. Sometimes the progressions and the solar arc directions tell the story. And in this case, the progressions and solar arc directions are absolutely telling the, the dominant storyline. So we're gonna go back to David's birth chart and I'm going to show you his progress chart in the bi wheel. And I think I have the wrong bi wheel. Hang on one second, guys. Sorry, when I film my videos, I should really tell my kids that I'm filming and nobody could bother me. Um, okay, 
So let's see what we got here. No, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted there. I think we got it. Okay. So now we have his secondary progressed chart for the day of his marriage. And this is where you're going to be blown away. So first of all, Mercury rules his seventh house. And by progression, Mercury has gone retrograde, which will happen for all of us at some point in our life if we're born with a direct Mercury. So Mercury not only has gone retrograde, but look at the conjunction Mercury is making. The ruler of his seventh house is conjunct Venus, the significator of love and marriage for everybody. And Venus natally is on his descendants. This is pretty important. The next major energy is that Secondary progressed sun is conjunct Mercury, ruler of the seventh house. This is incredible. And secondary progressed sun is conjunct the descendant itself. This is remarkable, remarkable astrology, guys. That by itself, you could look at this progress chart and say, yeah, he's getting married. But that's not all. His secondary progressed descendant is conjunct his natal Saturn. And his secondary progress descendant is conjunct his natal Mars because he natally has an opposition between them. So he has heavy angular activity to the marriage sector by progression and these major uh, progressions to seventh house ruler and to the seventh house itself. Incredible, astounding. What he also has is something called a progress lunar return, which is not exact just yet, but it is it, in a few months he will have it. And that's interesting because uh, that is setting up, well, I don't wanna get too far into it, but I am making a prediction for them that they're gonna have a baby a lot sooner than they think. I'm gonna leave it at that and not say anything else about that actually, because I do want my kids to live their life. And so let's go to the solar arc directions. So, so our direction, here we have another amazing measurement. Amazing, like, oh my gosh. So with the solar arc directed moon, which again, one degree a year, it's gonna move. His solar arc moon is conjunct his sun. Sun moon links are incredibly uh, relevant when somebody gets married and common when somebody gets married. Really, really uh, just beautiful, beautiful energy. So he has that in his solar arcs. Now I'm going to show you his converse progressions because he also has quite an impressive lineup in his converse progress chart. And guys, if you think for one minute that there is no such thing as destiny and fate and certain fated events are meant to happen at certain times in our life, I challenge you to study converse progressions with secondary progressions and you see this hologram of life that could go forward in time and backwards in time simultaneously and the event happens at the same time. You could predict it for the same time. It will blow your mind, I'm telling you. So by converse progression, he has converse progress sun conjunct natal moon. Holy crap. That echoes the solar arc moon equals sun. He has converse progress sun conjunct the natal moon. And converse progress Venus conjunct the sun. Venus sun links are notorious for bringing marriage energy and babies or happy events in a person's life. So beautiful, incredible. I lost count of how many measurements I showed you to prove the marriage that is showing up in both of these people's charts at the same time. So I hope you guys found this video, this instructional video helpful. I hope it inspires you to really learn more about authentic, genuine astrology and astrological techniques way beyond sun sign astrology, guys, way beyond. And you got to learn it the right way. And the only way you're going to learn it the right way is through proper instruction and a qualified teacher. 
qualified astrologer who can teach you these techniques because not every astrologer, there, could, there are many great astrologers out, out there, but not every astrologer is also a good teacher. So you have to find a, an astrologer who is also a good teacher to really teach you these techniques. And again, I have had an astrology school on my website for over 15 years. And in all of my classes, I teach you personalized classes using your birth charts as the lesson plan. And I give homework assignments. I give unlimited email support. And I teach live instruction myself every week to students. I do not use teacher's assistance. I do not farm it out to other people. I do it myself because I want to nurture you and make sure you're really learning astrology. So if this is something that you're serious about doing, please go visit my website and sign up uh, to be on the waiting list for my classes. I do not teach all of my classes at once. So you do have to wait and be patient. I start from a group of beginners and then I take you all the way to advanced and professional as far as you want to go. So thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know about your thoughts on pre marriage predictors. And if you could go back to your own charts and predict your own marriages and see it and, and tell me what cycles you're seeing. Remember, it, every marriage is going to be first, seventh house. First house, seventh house ruler. Venus is usually involved in some way. And your life is changing. Your status is changing. Sometimes that involves the midheaven. Fourth house access, you're moving. Maybe you're moving in, you're buying a house. So now you have to consider that. You have to know where to look for every event, but you can predict it. Trust me. All right, guys, take care. See you next.